Today we're going to be doing some science, so we can then be accused of racism by various ideologically not very interconnected parties, just so we can debunk one of the race realists uh, on the right racists most common arguments. One of the most common debates I see online in certain circles is the debate of nature versus nurture. Describe literally any aspect of the human condition and you will invariably have anime avatars arguing for it being completely nature and rainbow flag avatars arguing for it being completely nurture. Personally, I do think that most people understand that it is in fact both but also they don't want to get involved with debating like idiots like that is they're a bit too high up the self-respect chain which i am not and also uh, i think that sometimes the the relationship isn't too clear to everyone so that's why today we're going to use just complete pop science language to explain the concept of nature versus nurture and heritability. A very common metaphor that is used to sort of describe what the DNA does is that the DNA is the blueprint for your body, which is true, but it's also not really the whole story. It's really more of a collection of blueprints that ultimately are indexed in a way that will, if put into practice, create a structure that makes sense within its given environment, depending on, you know, special conditions, uh, materials available, the terrain. And aside from picking which blueprints are being used specifically, the people actually working on the construction site will also make immediate alterations, they will make minor mistakes that have ripple effects throughout the whole building, and they will often just look, look at this, this bone is broken, we are going to put more stuff into it, is basically, oh look, this pillar, it looks like it's more load-bearing than it maybe should be, put more stuff onto it so it can hold more. Consider, for instance, a muscle, right? It will expand if you put strain on it and also have the protein and minerals available to make it bigger. The muscle and how it works is defined by the blueprint, but how big it actually is is dependent on the environment. There's a lot of parts of the structure that are very easy to build early on, but at a certain point when the whole thing is done enough, it becomes very complicated to change them, if not altogether important possible, which is why your most formative years for your physical and mental being tends to be in your 20 or so first years. Now, of course, the human body is a lot more adaptive even into old age than a building. This is, you know, an analogy or a metaphor, depending on your viewpoint. And though it may seem as though there is some kind of intelligence behind this very complex process, really, it's uh, the intelligence is more of an emergent quality of it being an algorithm refined over millions of years of evolution. And is of course also prone to error and maladaptations. There are some blueprints that are useful in some situations that get implemented by mistake because certain triggers are hit. Sometimes, you know, different aspects of the structure don't interact right, it's not sitting in a very good spot, like you were, for instance, abused as a child, and so you develop a personality disorder that you wouldn't have developed if you hadn't been abused as a child, but because you were, that's what happens. The genetic material for it you carried regardless. And also there is, of course, a handful of, like, shit blueprints, like, dispersed throughout the various different folders that we use to build our buildings. Uh, which is why incest is bad, because then eventually you have more, a higher frequency of the shit ones. And sometimes even a good one is used, but the materials aren't there to properly implement it, and it turns out shit. This is why you can carry the genetic potential for various different problematic conditions in your blueprint folder, but they never manifest because they never get built into the structure of you. And to explain how that happens, we have to switch metaphors entirely, because I love doing that. So forget about the building and imagine instead a planter box. You know, it's like a box or maybe just a patch of dirt that has soil in it. Now you throw various different seeds 
into it. For this specific situation, we're going to take seeds from all over the world. And as it happens, various different plants from all over the world have different conditions that are optimal for their growth. Some require very little water and are easily drowned, while others, like if they don't get enough water, they immediately die. There's some that are actually not very happy with sunlight at all, and that there are some that need a lot of it. And so those two can't really coexist that much necessarily, because one would get burnt under the conditions of the other, and the other would just not grow under the conditions of the first. And now you take that planter box and just, through magic, make carbon copies of it and place it in various different greenhouses with various different growing conditions. Like, so, you know, the, the sunlight levels are different, the, the heat temperature, soil moisture, mineral availability, microorganisms, all those kinds of different factors. And so even though all of the planter boxes were actually completely identical, the landscape of what you end up with due to the various different conditions that you placed them in is very different. Now there are of course certain sets of growing conditions that are just not very good for pretty much any plant, like continental Antarctica, or like the Sahara Desert, there's not really a lot of plants that can survive that kind of environment. And those few plants that are adapted to such extreme environments are usually not compatible with uh, other environments because they're so incredibly specialized. So having sunlight is generally better than not having sunlight to, for plant growth. Having water is generally better than not having water for plant life. There's certain optimum conditions that will encourage the flourishing of as much plant life as possible. And so this is where nature and nurture really comes to show in a practical context. In genetics there is a concept called heritability which describes how much of a role uh, genetics plays in uh, making sure that one trait g goes from one generation to the next generation, regardless of environment. And this is where the race realist argument comes in, by the way, because it turns out, and this is actually true, that intelligence has a fairly high heritability. And just to preempt, because I can already hear the tabula rasa idiots typing their angry screeds in the comments, the brain is the most complex organ in the body, but also, it is an organ in the body, and like every other organ in the body, it is partially defined by your genetics. This is factually true, regardless of whether you want to believe it or not. Now, you may have seen the following argument being made in regards to heritability by race realists. It goes like this. We know that people in Europe are, on average, a significant bit more intelligent than people in, say, Africa. We also know that intelligence is a very heritable trait. Therefore, we reach the conclusion that people in Africa are simply genetically inferior in a way that makes them less intelligent. And as much as the premises are true, the conclusion really isn't true at all. It stems from a fundamental misunderstanding of what heritability means. While it does describe how much you inherit a given allele regardless of environmental conditions, that doesn't actually mean that environmental conditions are irrelevant. They do in fact still play a major role in how that gene is expressed. Let's get a new planter box and just fill it with seeds of for grass. Just regular old green grass that you could have outside. Now, once again, we do the thing where we magically create a carbon copy of this uh, box of seeds. So it's the exact same seeds are in both boxes. And we take one of these boxes and place them into just perfect conditions for grass. Really, it's nice moisture. We water them at the perfect intervals. There is the ideal balance of sunlight to shadow. It's just, it's grass heaven. And now as the grass grows, not all blades of grass will be exactly the same height. And so the difference in height between these things, because they were all exposed to the same conditions, means that with these specific seeds, the height was heritable and not dependent upon environmental factors. Now the other box we put in really bad conditions for grass. It's, it's too dry, it's too hot. We don't really water them all that much. The point is, it's not very good. Now even though they are genetically identical, the tallest blades of grass in the second box will not come close to the shortest blades of grass in the first. Maybe you'll have one or two that can like go in there, but on average it's much, much lower. So though the height of the grass blades is absolutely heritable, the environmental conditions 
is what stunted their growth. So to translate this, to claim that people in Africa are genetically predisposed to low intelligence is basically akin to saying that people in Africa are genetically predisposed to the effects of malnutrition. It's just pure bullshit. We know that the reason why most populations in Africa are not as intelligent as most populations in Europe is because they do not have access to the same kinds of means that the average European does. The conditions for the development of high intelligence are not given. And all of these are very complex factors, like not just access to good nutrition, especially in like the early formative years, uh, quality medical care, open access to good education, that one is especially essential. Psychological stress, even having enough time on your hands to like learn things in the first place. The actual primary indicator of how intelligent you're going to be is your wealth. People who grow up poor tend to be less intelligent than people who grow up wealthy. So in Europe, generally, even if you are poor, you have access to quality medical care. It's really not that much of a problem. You've access to good nutrition, education is mandatory. That does a lot to offset the poor wealthy divide. Africa does not have most of these things in most places. And in the places where it does have these things, noticeably, there's not really that much of a difference in intelligence to Europe. And this is of course in part of the fact that Africa is just quite rugged. It's very difficult to build the kind of nation states there that will be able to supply the kind of uh, economic and social safety net that will offset this level of poverty, not to mention that the level of poverty present there is much worse in the first place. But also one of the primary causes is that this is intergenerational poverty inherited from the exploitation that was bestowed upon them, shall we say, by uh, colonialist empires. So the problem on a very high global scale in this situation is effectively systemic racism. Because of course the global financial aristocracy doesn't really benefit all that much from educating the African populace. They would just rather keep on stealing their resources. So it has nothing to do with genetics. So next time you encounter a race realist nut job doing this kind of argument, now you know why they're wrong. Thank you very much for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe, share this to your relevant communities, but do not spam them. Consider supporting me on Patreon or Subscribestar, buying some of my merchandise or my short story collection. And in that spirit, I do very much think that it is an essential humanitarian effort to create these kinds of stable, self-sustaining economies that are actually in the hands of the local populations in order to help them achieve their maximum potential, the way that most industrialized nations seek to do. I do not think that our responsibility to help our fellow human beings ends where the national borders end. And see you around, cunts.